Well, today is Thanksgiving, so happy Thanksgiving, right? Happy Thanksgiving. You know, with the way our world is and the year that has been 2020 and all the changes, all the heartache, all the sorrow, the grief, the heavy heartedness that it has brought into our lives, I wonder, how are you saying Happy Thanksgiving this year? Are you saying it with an exclamation point of of happy thanksgiving and kind of with defiant joy against the darkness and pushing back and saying, you know, this year has been hard, but we're, we're still giving thanks. We are still celebrating. Are you saying it more like a question mark, like happy thanksgiving? Like why, why is anybody calling it happy, right? There, there's so much loss. There, there is so much grief. Everything is different. It doesn't look or feel like a normal Thanksgiving. Or maybe you're kind of somewhere in the middle and you, you've gotten rid of the word happy altogether. And you're just saying, well, it's, it's Thanksgiving. We'll, we'll do a little bit of something, but it, it's hard to celebrate right now. I don't, I don't feel like rejoicing. I don't feel like giving thanks. I don't feel like celebrating right now. How, how are you saying happy Thanksgiving this year? Right? We, we know it looks different and it most certainly feels different. Maybe you are being defiant with your joy and, and fighting for joy in the midst of the heavy heartedness and the darkness all around us and saying it, it doesn't matter we're, we're still giving thanks we're still going to celebrate however we have to no matter what it looks like we, we are going to have joy it, it's the beginning of the holiday season so I've seen many people begin to kind of cheat and, and start putting up Christmas decorations a little bit earlier than normally would because we're fighting for joy and saying, no, we're trying to find ways to give things, to, to have comfort, to have hope, to have joy during this time and during this season. For my wife and I, we realized that this is the, the first Thanksgiving in our time together that we have not been with some part of our family or had some part of our family staying with us. And so it, it feels different. And it looks different, but we're still cooking a whole meal. We have turkey and desserts and sides and and maybe you're trying to be defiant with joy and you're saying it it doesn't matter if there's only two or three or four of us. We're we're still cooking all the rolls. We're still doing all the sides. We're still doing all the desserts. See, it doesn't matter how we're celebrating Thanksgiving this year. The reality is that we all know that it looks and feels different. And in some ways, for all of us, it can feel a little bit hard to celebrate, to to shout with joy, and to give thanks and praise. Because sometimes we just don't feel like right now celebrating. There's so much going on. There's so much heartache in the world. One of the verses that I always heard growing up in church around the time of Thanksgiving comes from Psalm 118, where it says, Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It's a great verse for Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is supposed to be this time where we have joy, we celebrate, we rejoice at what God has given to us and how He has cared for us and blessed us. But this verse kind of is not the same in 2020. Well, today's the day that the Lord has made. How am I supposed to have joy in the midst of all of this? How am I supposed to rejoice and, and give thanks and celebrate that today is the day that the Lord has made? Maybe some of you are feeling like, couldn't he have made a better day? And then it's not just about Thanksgiving as we enter the holidays and we continue going through all these times where we're supposed to be together and celebrating and rejoicing with our hearts that are heavy and burdened. It can be hard to shout as the psalmist did and say, yeah, today's the day that the Lord has made. Let's rejoice and be glad in it. So I want to talk about how we can actually practice this verse 
even in 2020, even on a Thanksgiving that looks and feels different? How do we have joy? How do we rejoice and celebrate and give thanks to God? Because this is the day that the Lord has made. In the book of Habakkuk, there's this wonderful interaction between God and the prophet Habakkuk. And they have this back and forth interaction because Habakkuk is not happy about what God is allowing to happen in the world. He is not happy about how things are going in his country and in his city and in his home. And so he's arguing with God and asking God to do something. And in the midst of all of this, God and Habakkuk go back and forth and back and forth. And essentially what we have is Habakkuk's journal of their interactions. And eventually God tells Habakkuk, well, I'm going to do a new thing. I am going to restore things. I am going to take care of my people. But what we know from history is that Habakkuk didn't get to see those changes. He wasn't around when God restored his people. He wasn't around when God made things new again and and healed them and brought them home. Instead, what Habakkuk was left with was more suffering, more heartache, more things being broken and going wrong, things happening the way he didn't want them to. And what is so beautiful about this book is how it ends. That rather than ending with more complaints and saying, how do you expect me to worship you and celebrate and rejoice in you when all these things are going wrong and I won't even get to see the things get better. Instead, Habakkuk writes this. He says, Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. For the sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. See what Habakkuk is saying is, even though everything is is falling apart around me, nothing looks the same, nothing feels the same, nothing looks the way it's supposed to, nothing feels the way it's supposed to, I will still yet rejoice in my God because my God is the source of my joy and my salvation, not the circumstances around me. So when we begin to think about thanksgiving and rejoicing in God because this is the day that the Lord has made, that can be really hard when our circumstances around us are really hard, when they are creating heavy burdens on us, when they are weighing our hearts and souls down. But what we learn from Habakkuk is to find our true source of rejoicing and celebrating and giving thanks by finding that source in God Himself and the salvation that He gives to us. Because God and His salvation go beyond and transcend all of our circumstances. And that when we find our true joy and our true thanksgiving in Him and His salvation, that we, even in a year like 2020, even on a Thanksgiving like this year, that can feel and look so different, can still say with all boldness and confidence, today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alan Gardner was a missionary in the 1800s, and in 1851, he and another group of English missionaries were setting sail to go to people that had never heard the gospel before. And on their journey, they were shipwrecked on an uninhabited remote island off the coast of South America. And one by one, 
they began to die. That each person in the group, one by one, began to pass away. And Alan Gardner, from his journal entries, is the last one alive. And in his final journal entry that was found after he and everybody in his party had passed, he writes this, two things. One is from Psalm chapter 34, verse 10. Young lions lack food and go hungry, but those who seek the Lord will not lack any good thing. And in the, the last sentence of the final entry in his journal, Alan Gardner, right before his death, wrote, I am overwhelmed with a sense of the goodness of God. What a powerful statement of faith in the midst of death and grief and sorrow and loss. That because his view was on who God is and his view is on the salvation that God gives, even in the midst of horrific suffering and loss, he was able to write and say, I'm overwhelmed with the sense of a goodness of God. Much like Habakkuk, though everything is falling apart, Though the the economy is terrible, even though there is loss and death, Habakkuk declares, I will still rejoice in my God because He's my strength and He is my salvation. You know, throughout the book of Psalms, we are told over and over and over again, dozens and dozens of times, to give thanks to the Lord our God. We often share and read and see these verses during this time of year of giving thanks to God. But I want to share one in particular with you that teaches us how we're able to do it even when we don't feel like it. How are we able to have faith in God, to have joy in God? How are we able to give thanks to God even when we're surrounded by heartache and heavy burdens and loss and grief and sorrow. Much like Alan Gardner, how are we to be overwhelmed with the sense of the goodness of God even in the midst of the worst kind of mourning and grief and sorrow? And Psalm 136 says over and over and over and over again to give thanks to the Lord our God. But it gives us a reason why. Give thanks to the Lord For He is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven. His love endures forever. So the key here is not just the command, give thanks to the Lord. You're like, okay, well, it's Thanksgiving and we're told to give thanks to the Lord. So that's just what we're going to do. Whether we feel it or want to, doesn't matter. That's just what we're going to do. Now, see the, the key here of giving thanks to the Lord is understanding who He is, that He is the God of heaven. He is Lord of lords. He is over all things. But to also understand the refrain of Psalm 136, that His love endures forever. And I love the language that his love endures. It means his love's not going to run out. His love's not going to get worn out. Many of us are feeling worn out, but God's love does not get worn out. It doesn't run out. There's not a limited supply. And God's love endures, meaning It can handle all the heaviness of your life. It can handle your tears and your cries and your heartaches. That Those are not going to wear out God. They're not going to make God stop loving you because His love endures forever. His love endures through all of 2020. His love endures on Thanksgiving. His love endures the next day and next week. No matter what you are facing, no matter what you are carrying and feeling, 
His love for you endures. When we place our hope, we place our joy and our rejoicing and our thanksgiving in who our God is. And like Habakkuk says, in His salvation for us. When we place our joy and our thanksgiving in the truth that His love for us endures forever each and every day, then we really can give thanks to God no matter our circumstances. We really can celebrate and rejoice no matter what today looks like, that today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and give thanks because His love for you endures forever. God's peace to you and happy Thanksgiving.